Well, it's a joy to be uh, here back in your midst in Macclesfield uh, again uh, today to bring to you the good news, glad tidings that there is a, a saviour, there is a way back to God from the dark, dark path of sin that yet rages in our world and of course is um, in the most awful way is brought to our attention once again. But of course, the truth of the matter is that that, um, well, that sin resides in uh, each and every one of us. All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And what do sinners need but a Savior? And God in the greatness, immensity of his love, has made available to you, even to you here in Michael's field today, a savior, a mediator, one with the ability to bring you back to God from the dark path of sin, Jesus, the Son of God. For God so loved the world, not the size of it, not a big world, but a bad one, God so loved this bad, bad, this evil, wicked world that he gave. That's the astonishing thing. Not, his, not the suffering, not the judgments of God. They, they're not the astonishing things. They're just, um, well, no surprise there at all. Now, what surprises me is that the word of God yet stands. God so loved this evil, wicked world that he gave his only begotten son gave him up to the death of the cross that is suffering dying bleeding dying and taking the place of sinners that through him a Macclesfield sinner even might be reconciled to him today in the way of God's generous love in the way of his free grace God so loved the world that he gave his only son that whosoever believeth in him puts their trust, their confidence in him gets the free grace, the free love, the free reconciliation of God. You come without money, you come without price, no conditions, none whatsoever. You simply come to put your trust in believe in, confide in Jesus Christ, the Son of God, and you get eternal life, everlasting life. For whosoever believeth shall not perish, die in their sin, that is, go to a lost eternity, but have everlasting life. Through Jesus Christ, the only, the only Savior, the only hope of any nation, of any people, of any town, even that of Michael's field today. But of course, uh, there is a problem, is there not? Sin, of course, brings the displeasure of God upon us, even the wrath of God. The Bible says that for the wrath of God is revealed from heaven. Where do you see it? If it's revealed, where, you say, well, where do I see it? Well, you look around you. You look around you in the world today. You look at what's taking place in Israel today, in Gaza. You look at the horrors of that warfare, of that conflict. You see what men are doing to their fellow man. That's the wrath of God. You see it in your own nation. You listen, you listen to what comes out of the mouths of people, high and low, the authorities, the state, the government, the man in the street, the homeless even. You see the thinking, you see the speaking, the words, you see what comes out of man. You see the horrors that are performed in this world today, those things that you're ever and always complaining about. The bad stuff, you know? That's the wrath of God. You see, here's, here's what happens, you know? You, 
You say God says he so loves the world, he gives his son, his only begotten son. You say, no, I don't want him. I don't want God, I don't want his son, I don't want his salvation. So God says, okay. Okay, he says, I'll open another door for you. Silversmith again. Now take it away, son. Take it away. Take it away. No, I don't. I don't want it. No. What would that do for anybody? What that do? What does it do for you? What does it do for you, eh? Go on your knees. Go on your knees, man, eh? Before the real cross. Get on your knees, repent, believe the gospel. So you say you don't want God, you want his son, you don't want his salvation. So God says in effect, okay, I'll open another door for you. Yeah. I'll even give you a push through the door. I'll help you through it. Yeah. And I'll give you, instead of, you don't want me, you don't want my son. So I'll give you, I'll give you what you want. Yeah. I'll give you what you want. I'll give you your heart's desire. And what's your heart's desire? For more sin, more wickedness, more evil. And then you turn around and you provoke him to more wrath by complaining about the evil and the wickedness in the world. And you come to his servants, you come to the gospel preacher, you come to Christ's ambassador, and, and you say, if God is, why all the suffering? Why all the war? Why the violence? what you want. You don't want God. You want sin. So he, he gives it to you. He gives you over to reprobate minds to do those things that are not fitting for animals to do. Never mind human beings. Like cutting off the heads of infant children. Yeah? That's your sin. And you get people in your own streets, your own towns and cities celebrating that stuff. Uh, that's what God has given the world over to because of its departure from God. Because of the, the great sin, refusal to trust, breach of the first commandment of God. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. That's a call to faith, to trust in your maker, to trust in God. That's the great sin, unbelief, wicked hearts of unbelief. That's where all this stuff comes from. That's where, that's where the cutting off of children's heads comes from. The slaughter and raping of women. That's where it comes from. Out of evil, wicked hearts of unbelief that refuse to trust in their maker. That's the great sin. And that's the reason for. That's the very reason for. Because there's always, you see, there's, there, there's always effect and cause, you know. You want rid of the effects, you want rid of the bad stuff, you know. But, but you see, you have to go deep, you have to go down, you have to look for the, you have to look for the cause. And the cause, your evil hearts of unbelief. That's the cause. And the effect of it is all the bad stuff you see taking place in your world today, in your own society, here in your own town of Ma Macclesfield. Cause and effect, you can't get away from it. But treating, treating the effects of no value, none whatsoever, no effect, unless you deal with the cause, the root cause, the unbelief the refusal to trust in your maker, the triune God that is. Not the, not the gods of Mecca or Rome, but the God of Holy Scripture, the God of the Bible, the God and Father, my Lord Jesus Christ, the triune God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, the Father who in the immensity of his love for this wicked, evil world sent his sent his son, the second person of the Trinity, sent him into the world to suffer, bleed, and die, to rise again from the dead, to make available to you a savior, a mediator, to bring you back to God, and to rise again from the dead, to justify you, reconcile you to God. 
and that by the effectual working of God's Spirit through what I'm doing here today, the preaching of the gospel amongst you, that you might be turned from your evil hearts of unbelief that brings all the wickedness that spills out into all the world. Before you condemn others, consider Macclesfield, will you, in your quiet little town, far, far distance from Israel and from Gaza, you, we, all of us, are contributors to the wickedness that fills the world today. And the root cause, well, the Bible tells us, because they believed not in God and trusted not in his salvation. Therefore the Lord heard and was wrath. His wrath was kindled against the people. Why? Simply and only because they believed not in God, in the triune God, in the maker of heaven and earth. In their maker they trusted him not, and in his salvation they rejected it, apostatized from God. The God, the same God, who has come to this your own nation in days past in great and awesome power, transforming it. Who do you think the great in Great Britain came from? It came from the great God, the triune God. The one I bring before you today is where the greatness came from, but that greatness is gone. Now it's broken Britain and getting more and more broke by the day. But why? Why? Because of your departure, because of your apostasy, because of your evil, wicked hearts of unbelief. Just that one sin, that's the great sin. That's the sin of them all. Because no matter what else you are, call yourself, you know, um, I don't know, a lesbian, a homosexual of some kind, fornicator, coveter, thief, drunkard, all, all that other you see, that, all that other can be dealt with. And how? Well, by faith in the Son of God, by the grace of God through faith, all that can be dealt with. That can be forgiven. That can be obliterated. That can be, that can be sent far, far away, so far away that not even God himself can find it anymore into the depths of the sea. If that is, if that is you are to believe, that is where you to receive, that is where you to close with the Son of God. The mediator, the Savior made available to you. The one who stands ready to save you, welcome you, unconditionally I tell you, free, the free, absolute, utter, unconditional free grace of God. The generosity of his love is amazing, astonishing in the face of the wickedness, I tell you, of this world, of mankind, even of this town of Macclesfield today. Get right with God. How do you say? By faith in Jesus Christ. You want a Bible? You want a copy of God's written word? I've got Bibles. I've got New Testaments. I've got this Gospel of John. You can begin with that if you like. Read God's word for yourself. Read those very words, astonishing, amazing words. Oh, you're so familiar, you've heard them so many times. But let them sink into your soul. For God so loved this evil, wicked world that he gave his only begotten son. Go and wash your filthy mouth out. Do that, eh? Go and wash that filthy mouth out. You see what I mean? You know what I mean? Not long before we were telling you about the free grace <coughs> and the generosity of God's love. <coughs> and what kind of response do we get? So like I say, you know, be amazed, be astonished. Read God's word for yourself. Got a question, feel free to ask it. A reasonable one, I mean. A rational one, that is. Got a question? I haven't got the answers to all your philosophical dilemmas, but we do have the answer to the most important question of all. How does a man, a woman, a town, a nation, how does anyone get right with God? And the answer is plain and simple. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. 
So you like a copy of God's Word, you got a question, like somebody to pray for you, for whatever reason, <clears throat> feel free to ask. Only here to help, point you in the right direction, the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world, the only one who can cure this sin-sick world. Of course, one day will do so. God, don't you know, has given notice to the world that he intends to judge the world all civilization, that is, every man, woman, and child born into this world, he has given notice that he intends to judge the world by that man whom he has raised from the dead, even Jesus Christ. So in that day, you see, when you stand before God, as we all must, for as the Bible says, we all stand before the judgment throne of Christ. So it's judge Jesus, of the Savior, the Mediator Jesus, which will it be? The one who today would take away your sins, the one who would bear them away by his dying, by his suffering on that cross and rising again from the dead. Eternal life is offered to you, is set before you, you even here today at this late hour, in the day, God's day, I mean God's clock, five minutes to midnight. The time is short. There's urgency about the matter. Be ye reconciled to God. Amazing, astonishing that Jesus Christ, the Son of God, the King of glory, through I, through me, his ambassador here today in Macclesfield Town is pleading with you that you should be reconciled to God. What love, I ask you, is this astonishing, amazing. And all I can hear is the voice of a man behind me cursing and swearing. If that's not sin, then tell me, pray tell me what is. But the great sin, the greatest of them all, the daddy of them all, the father from whom comes them all, your evil hearts of unbelief, your wicked, evil hearts of unbelief. That's the great sin, that's the enormous sin that you don't trust in God. Or maybe perhaps you call yourself, today you would call yourself an atheist. Well, let me tell you, first of all, that's a temporary condition. That won't last. Because the day comes when you stand before the God that to today you deny. But then, secondly, you call yourself an atheist. I say, no, that's the wrong title. That's the wrong label. Call yourself what you are, not an atheist, but a denier, or maybe perhaps even a liar. Because, you see, the truth of the matter is that all men, there is no such a thing as an atheist on planet Earth. They don't exist. All men know that God exists. You may be excused by the things that he has made. You look in the mirror morning by morning. You see a man, you see a woman made in the image of God. No, without excuse, whoever you are, Whatever you call yourself today, atheist, that's not the right label. Liar, denier, but not atheist. No, without excuse. So, repent today. Repent, Macclesfield sinners, of that great, that enormous sin, that sin of unbelief, because they believed not in God and trusted not in his salvation. God's wrath was and remained upon them and will remain upon you. His wrath is revealed from heaven now against all the ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who hold, hold down that is the truth and unrighteousness and wickedness that is. Wrath of God upon you even now, even now as I speak and remains and will remain upon you for all eternity one day, unless that is, of course, you are granted, you are given by the grace of God, you are given salvation in the way that is of repentance 
towards God and faith towards his son Jesus Christ. A reception, that is, of the mediator made available to you. The Christ who is dead for you and alive to justify you came to his own, his own people, but they didn't receive him. They didn't believe on his name, but to as many as did receive him, to those who did believe on his name, he gave the, the right, the authority, he gave the power to become that which they were not, to become children of God. You see, but children of wrath by nature, that's why you're in unbelief, conceived and set in your mother's womb, says God, that's where your sin career begins. There, uh, conceived uh, in your mother's womb, that, that, that moment of conception there, in your mother's womb, you were conceived in sin by natural generation. One after the other, all of us born into this world, natural born sinners, conceived in sin, and then nine months later, you're born in sin, and you live in it. In wicked hearts of unbelief, refusing, repelling, not trusting in God and your maker, and in the salvation that he has made available to you, the mediator that he has given to you at such great, awesome cost. His very best, his only best, his only begotten son gave him and gave him up to the death of the cross to suffer, to take away your sin, take away your guilt, Take away your shame, your blame. Take the curse of God from off of you, the wrath of God from off of you. Maybe perhaps one of the questions in your mind this morning, maybe you, you think, well, why, why don't they stop the war? You know, why, why don't they live at peace with one another? Israel and Gaza and everywhere else. Why, why all this stuff? Why, why, why all these wars? Why all this killing? Because they can't. Because they can't because of these evil natures. That's what comes out of men. Evil thoughts. Evil thoughts proceed from the hearts of men and women the world over. Murder, killing, slaughter, immorality, you name it, comes out of the hearts of men and women like you and I, the world over. So you have a world, you have a world broken, destroyed, ruined, mankind. But God so loved this evil world that he gave his only begotten son that even at this late hour, even at this time, even now, before you breathe your last, close your eyes in death and open them to behold the judge of all the earth, or maybe by faith to behold the Son of God to welcome you into heaven's glory, one or the other, one or the other. The day comes when you stand, as you must, before the judgment throne of God. What will you do with your sin then? Too late. Where will you spend eternity? Time is short. Time is short. The clock is ticking. The day is coming when the Son of God shall appear with his holy angels, the Bible says, in flaming fire to take vengeance upon all they that know not God and that obey not the gospel, refuse the Savior, reject the mediator. Do not repent, that is, the obedience God requires of you today. Repentance towards God and faith towards His Son, Jesus Christ. That's the way of escape. That's the way of salvation. The only. In the face of the certainty, I ask you, atheist, no, denier, call yourself what you are, but I call you something else. I call you a no-hoper. That's what you are. 
without God and without Jesus Christ as your Savior, your mediator. That's all you are in this world. It doesn't matter who you are. It doesn't matter how much you've got. It doesn't matter what you achieve in this world. It doesn't matter how long you live. It doesn't matter how fit you are. Death is coming for you. It's trolling you. That's all you've got to look forward to. Nothing but death. It's appointed unto man wants to die. After that, you cock your toes up. You go out just like all the others. Yep. But after this, yep. after this, then you face the judgment. Then yep. you stand before your maker and you hear that declaration, get out of my sight. I never knew you. Depart from me, you workers of iniquity. Unless, of course, that is. Yep, you'll be on the... You'd be on YouTube tonight, sir. Yeah. <laughs> Let the world see what a fool you are. Huh? Why don't you grow up, sir? Eh? What age are you? What age are you? Huh? Uh, you know, eh, I speak to young teenagers. Eh? They're more mature than you are. Get on your knees, sir. Get on your knees before God, before he takes you out of this world. So like I say, friends, you know, no hope, no hope. F certainty of death, it's appointed unto man wants to die. The inevitability of God's judgment. I tell you, as one has already said, if God doesn't judge this generation, He'll have to apologize to Noah's generation, to the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah. And I tell you, God, I tell you, God's not in the way of, he's not in the way of apologizing for anything he does. So, you see, the, the time is short, Michaelsfield Center, you know. Death is coming to us all, and who knows, you know. <laughs> you, you think maybe you've got time. Have you got this afternoon? Have you got tonight? Have you got tomorrow? Who knows? Now is the time, says God. Now is the accepted time because now is the only time that you've got. Now when you're hearing of the generosity of God's love, of the fullness, of the freeness of His grace, an unconditional reconciliation, and the way simply of faith trusting, receiving of his mediator, his savior that he's made available to you. You simply take the gift of God for God so loved the world that he gave. Because he's a giving God, he loves to give. He's a good God. Man is evil, God is good, God is love. And in his love and in his goodness, his overflowing goodness, he has given to you a savior, a mediator, a gift, God's gift to the world. You take him, you receive him. It's that simple. A child, I tell you, an infant child could understand better than most adults today in Michaelsfield Town. Because, well, the problem with adults is the longer that you live, the longer that you can continue in sin. Well, you grow, you grow in sin, you see. It, it develops within you, and you become more cynical, more unbelieving the older you get. That's why not many old people get saved. It's mostly young people. Not always, but mostly. But whoever... Whatever you are today, and whatever kind of sin, whatever age you're at, today the offer of salvation is placed before you. The mediator, Jesus Christ, the Son of God, is set before you. You take him, you believe in him, you put your confidence in him and him alone, nothing of yourself, nothing of your religiosity. Mecca's or Rome's or anybody else's, simply and only trusting, not in a religion, man-made religion, but trusting in the person of God's Son, Jesus Christ, alone.
because neither is there salvation in any other name under heaven given amongst men whereby we must we must be saved so you see great sin great unbelief the cause of god's displeasure his wrath but the great power the power of god's salvation power of god unto salvation even yet now for everybody no for everybody who believes for those who trust in jesus for those who trust in the son of god the jesus that is of the bible not the jesus of rome not the jesus of mecca but the jesus of the bible the son of god the second person of the blessed and holy trinity the son of god who came suffered and bled and died for sinners gave himself for us that we might be reconciled to god he is the gospel jesus he is the power of god unto salvation it's him that you need as a person not a religion not a philosophy not a new world view but a person jesus a lovely savior who bids you come unto me he says gentle lowly meek easy to be entreated not hard to deal with who bids you beckons you to come to him so you can do that on the authority of his his own work he gives you the authority he gives you the power you got the justification you got the warrant to believe in hearing the gospel even if you be even if you be one of the reprobate you have the warrant to believe in jesus in hearing the gospel here today in the love of god the power the power the power lies in the son of god power doesn't lie in a religious system power doesn't lie in you you haven't got the you haven't got the power to live up to your own standards you don't even keep up to your own standards never mind god well does god say for all the sin that comes short of the glory the glorious standard of god but here you are today you haven't got the power to keep your own standards up you haven't got the power you haven't got the power to overcome just the, the, the ordinary addictions of life you know to the you know the the, the the drugs the immorality all the addictions that that fill your society today you can't you haven't even got the power to overcome them and you've got a greater addiction within you you've got the addiction to sin that you got from your parents by natural generation so how on earth are you going by your own strength or by some man-made religion are you gonna overcome the power of sin you see when jesus died on the cross this is why i say a person a person not a religion jesus because the blood that he shed on that cross you see has the power not only to cleanse to wash you make you clean but it has the power to transform you change you break cancel the power of sin in you that addiction to sin break and cancel its its power because that blood and shed on that cross wasn't just simply the blood of a man it was divine blood that was shed on that cross and that's why it's so effectual that's why it's power powerful to cleanse great power in the blood of jesus christ i tell you to break and cancel the deepest and darkest sin in your nature in your very heart and life and being to wash and cleanse you what will wash away my stain the hymn writer asks the question he says nothing but the blood of jesus what will make me whole again he says nothing but the blood of jesus nothing else nothing else without the shedding of blood there's no remission there's no forgiveness of sin none of that in islam 
a religion without, without a cross, a religion that denies the cross, denies the Son of God. No power there. Religion, Islam comes to kill and destroy. Jesus says, I came to heal and to save. Destruction. Christianity for 2,000 years has blessed this world, has blessed this nation. What nation, I ask you, has Islam ever blessed and ever prospered? Everywhere you see that religion predominant, you see nothing but despair, you see nothing but bondage, you see nothing but depravity, and you've got it growing here in your own nation. You've got it here in your own streets, protesting in your cities and celebrating the, celebrating the slaughter of, of children of babies in your own streets, Britain. Ah. What would make Britain proud again? Getting rid of that lot. Getting rid of that lot and stopping them coming in and bringing their murderous, killing religion to the streets of our country more and more by the day. Stop the rot. Stop them coming in and get them out that are already in. Unless they bow the knee to King Jesus, unless you do. But your only hope, it doesn't lie in politics, it doesn't lie in what the government, whoever the government be, no hope there, because they're just as powerless as you. They're just as weak as you, they're just as simple. They're just as depraved as you are. No hope in man, no power there, no power in politics, no power in philosophies of men. Darwin, Darwinianism, has that ever blessed a nation? No. The power lies in a person, in Jesus, the Son of God, who loved sinners. Loved them, I say, loved them, not hated them. Came in love, came to heal, came to save didn't come to destroy men's lives. In love, he gave himself for sinners. Sinners just like you, Macclesfield sinners. Just like you, sinners like you, ordinary people. He so loved them that he came and gave himself up to the death of the cross. Wasn't forced on him. Life wasn't taken from him. He gave it up freely, voluntarily, out of love for you, a Macclesfield sinner, that you might be reconciled to God even today in the way of faith believing, in the way of repentance and faith believing. But you can't do that yourself, can you? Maybe perhaps someone will say, well, I tried that repenting business, it didn't work. I tried that believing business, it didn't work. No, your efforts never will work. You come to Jesus. You come to Jesus unconditionally, without money, without price. You come with nothing. You come to him. He has to do it all. You can't do it. You've tried and tried, but you can't. Jesus must do it for you. He must do it all by his grace, or it doesn't get done at all. It's the gift of God, so come to Him. Whoever you are, whatever you are, however deep your sin might be, however powerful it rages in your soul, come to Him, come to Jesus, come to His blood shed on that cross. Lay yourself at His feet, cry out to Him for mercy. Son of God, have mercy upon me, a sinner. Great power, I tell you, the power of God unto salvation for everyone who gets believing, who gets faith, who gets the gift of God by grace, through faith, the gift of God, not ourselves, not ourselves. It's not in you, Michael Field sinners, 
That in you to do it yourself. By grace, through faith, the gift of God, sheer, unadulterated gift, the generosity of God's love and the full freeness of his grace. That's what the word grace means. It means free. It comes from the Latin gratis, free gratis, you know. No money, no price. You come, you get, you receive, and then you repent and you believe, and you get salvation. But the wrath of God remained upon these, he says, because he believed not in God and trusted not in his salvation. So they're left simply and only with, with the wrath of God. And of course, well, it increases, it doesn't diminish. Because the more and more you see that you live in sin and continue in sin, well, the more and more it develops, it grows, until the cup, the cup it's like a cup, you know, it's filling up all the time, and then it gets to the point where it's full. Well, that's when, that's when the judgment falls. That's when the sword comes. But you see, here today in Macclesfield, you'll be warned. And when God warns people, there's hope. He only warns people where there's hope. If there's no hope, he just comes in judgment. The sword just falls. He takes you away. But today, you're being entreated. Today, you're offered. Today, the, the mediator, the, the Savior is set before you. Today, you're warned about your sin. So that means there's hope for you. But when you, stop, when you stop hearing those warnings, when, you st when, when, God, when God restrains his servants and they don't come to you warning you anymore, entreating you anymore, believe me, you're in serious bother then. You're in serious bother then. But now it's still a day of grace. Now today, now today I stand before you, God's ambassador, and set before you the mediator, the reconciler, and plead with you on behalf of Jesus Christ, implore you, be re-reconciled to God while you may. Before his wrath falls upon you fully and finally, that great wrath in that great day of judgment, that day when he judges all flesh, by that man, by Jesus Christ. Today, Jesus, be your Savior, your sin bearer, take your sin away. Then, then he will be a very, very, very angry judge. And the more, of course, you've heard the gospel, even by the dint of the fact that you've heard the gospel again today on your streets, better you never heard it. Better you never happen through the town at this point. That is if you don't believe. That is if you don't receive the love of God. So I said before you, Michaelsfield sinners, the freeness of God's grace, I said before you, the free love of God, the free justification of God, willing, desiring, to reconcile sinners to himself. He is yet, amazing, astonishingly, the wickedness of this world, the evil that grows almost by the day, getting worse and worse daily, hourly even. And yet still, it's, it's yet a day of grace, yet a time when men and women are being reconciled to God because God is still as yet of a reconcilable disposition. But it won't always be like that. The day is coming when the shutters are going to come down on the marketplace of grace. The day is coming when the door will be shut just as, it was, just as it was in Noah's day, and it will be God who will shut the door. No hope then, sir. No hope then. Men and women will be crying out. 
just as they were. I don't doubt Noah's day. Noah opened the damn door to us, let us in. Too late. Too late. There'll be many in that day, the Bible tells me. The last book of the Bible, check it out for yourself. People will be crying out for the mountains, the hills, the rocks to come down and hide them from the presence of the wrath of the Lamb. There are people in hell today, if you can hear their voices, crying out, too late, too late. I heard the good news. I heard about Jesus. I was told again and again, but I kept putting it off. Too late, too late. I left it too late. But there's one cry you'll never hear coming out of hell, and it's this market. Market, listen to me. One cry you'll never hear coming out of hell is this. I came to Jesus, but he wouldn't have me. Jesus said, you come to me, I will not. I will in no way cast you out. He will have you. A wretched sinner, self-ruined, undone, broken, just like all the sinners of this world. What do sinners need? They need a Savior, and God has provided that Savior for you. God so loved the world, this evil, wicked world, that he gave his only begotten Son and requires of you only that you should take him. Come to him. Put your confidence in him. Confident enough to come to him. The smallest seed of faith, I tell you, brings the justifying free grace of God to a sinner. Justifying them, making them just as if they had never sinned. Clear before God. Not just not guilty, but righteous, altogether righteous. You come to Jesus, and he gives you his righteousness, his perfect rightness, with which in that day, when you breathe your last, close your eyes in death, and open them the other side, and you behold the Son of God in a shining glory, ready to, with open arms, to receive you into that eternal glory. Why? Why? Because you are better than other men? No. Because you are religious? No. Because you came to Jesus, because you trusted in him and him alone, nothing of yourself, nothing of man, you simply trusted in him fully and completely. And he saved you because that's what he is and that's what he does. He saves sinners and he would save you, Macclesfield sinners, today should you come to him, put your trust in him, believe in him. But don't delay. Don't leave it another day. Now is the time. Now is the accepted time, says God. Come today while you may. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. Repent ye and believe the gospel, he says. Why? Right? Because the kingdom of God is at hand, and that's the only way into it. Repent ye, Macclesfield sinners. Repent ye, repent ye, repent ye, and believe the gospel. Repent ye, and believe the gospel, for the kingdom of God is at hand. You'd like a copy of God's word that's freely offered to you, no cost, no obligation to you, none whatsoever. Full Bible, if you like, New Testament, this Gospel of John, freely offered to you. You're simply and only for the taking, no, no cost, no obligation. If you have a question, feel free to ask it. As I say, I don't have the answers to all your questions, but I do have the answer to the most important one. And you get right with God. And if for any reason at all, 
You'll be in trouble, distressed, even by your own making. You'll like somebody to pray for you, then I would be more than happy to do that for you also. Come one, come all. But come to Jesus. Come to him today. Come unto me, he says. And I will give you rest. May God bless you, Macclesfield, and of mercy, mercy I say upon your precious, precious, never dying soul. <laughs>